Let's get a sense of the situation then in Palestine overall. We're joined tonight on the line by South Africa's ambassador to Palestine, Sean Bainafelt, who's joining us from Ramallah. A very good evening to you, sir. So, Ramallah, where you are on the West Bank, or in the West Bank, yesterday experienced protests, many Palestinians pouring onto the streets in outrage at the bombing of the hospital in Gaza. Today we're seeing both Israel and the Islamic Jihad denying responsibility do you believe the Israelis were behind what happened? Well, I think, you know, the pictures out of Gaza are absolutely terrifying. And hour by hour, it seems to be becoming more terrifying. There's just such a stench of, of death. And, and one is bewildered, you know, it's incomprehensible, this, this level of, of death and, and destruction, this level of, of inhumanity. To see women and children, the disabled, the elderly, the infirmed, to see them fleeing for their lives in the kind of way that images and pictures project, you know, it just boggles the mind and it is so searingly painful. And I think that really one cannot have moral hypocrisy at this time. This is also not a moment for, for legal double standards. Mm. The suffering and the death just weigh, you know, to a massive scale. Um, it was always going to be inevitable. Um, you know, if you're dealing with such a crowded, heavily populated, um, you know, area like, like Gaza, uh, you were always going to be faced with overwhelming numbers in terms of deaths and casualties and injuries and, and destruction. And if anything, you know, one needs to get the international community to rise to obligations mm -hmm. and, to, um, and to pick up the responsibility here as international law, as international humanitarian law, as international human rights law, as rules of engagement as the Rome Statute would direct in instances of, of this nature. But it's there. Ambassador, if I may come in there then, on this latest, and the bombing of the hospital yesterday in Gaza is but one of the examples of alleged atrocities, war crimes committed in Gaza and in Israel since the 7th of October. We're hearing today from the Americans, President Joe Biden, saying he's convinced the version of the Israeli government is what is true as to responsibility for the attack on the hospital. The Palestinians still say they believe Israel was behind the bombardment that ultimately killed close to 500 people. Which version do you believe? Well, you would have seen uh, the statement of, of the South African government on the matter. It's there, it's been issued, and we would have um, condemned the attack. And uh, the attack is also, uh, if you were to consider the statement, you know, it speaks to, uh, to who's re responsible. And so international law and these kind of conventions that we have, the Geneva Conventions, these things must be made to work. Um, and we all have a responsibility in this regard, and we must shoulder the responsibility. Why do you think that responsibility has not yet been shouldered? I mean, fighting has now gone on in the region for over 10 days. The broader conflict and the root of the conflict has gone on for decades. Yet as we sit here today, none of that has been resolved. Yeah, no, look, it's a long-standing uh, conflict, but I think our own example, our own experience of difficulty, of division in the past and having been able to overcome, I think our own uh, example is an example to draw strength from. So no conflict, if you have sufficient uh, will, if you, if you have sufficient drive, if you pack it full of energy all the time, irrespective of difficulties, contradictions, issues of division that uh, might, be, might be there, um, no conflict cannot be overcome. And South Africa is most certainly a living example um, on that front. So we must continue to insist, even if you know, you do have difficulties, you do have the hurdles, you're not able necessarily to secure what you ought to be securing in terms of your global governance uh, processes and so on. You continue to push and you continue to drive. 
uh, forward and 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 this is what we what we need to do as i say this is not the time for moral hypocrisy and it's not the time for legal double standards we ought to seek to avoid that mm. today there was a vote of the united nations security council vetoed by the united states it says because there wasn't anything in uh, the draft that spoke to condemnation of or in not condemnation but rather nothing that spoke in the text to israel's right to defend itself in the last vote on a draft brought by the Russians, they said they did not support that one because that one contained nothing about condemnation of Hamas. What do you make then of the United States' stance having voted against these two resolutions, the first last week from the Russians and this one from the Brazilians, which had been um, positioned, shall we say, as somewhat of a compromise draft that they thought parties would perhaps be more agreeable to because instead, for example, of a complete ceasefire, it spoke of humanitarian pauses. Well, look, you know, we need a humanitarian intervention. That is clear in terms of what you have on the, on the ground in, in Gaza. And international law, international humanitarian law, international human rights law, you know, it is not silent. It is a voice that is there. It is a voice that must be that must be heard. There's no justice. Um, um, there's no respect for the rule of law. You know, you will not be able to to get peace if you don't if you don't have this. If you don't have justice, if you don't have respect for the rule of law, and so we must we must continue to to plug in to that and to hold on to um, on to that uh, international law. Um, not silent. International resolutions, not silent. Rome statute, not silent. Whatever the contradictions and the difficulties, we must continue to go back to the Security Council to make sure that we do get the kind of uh, expression, outcome, you know, in the end that will deliver a reprieve to people in, in Gaza. Right, and I want to go back to the issue of the hospital bombing. As you said, the South African government had issued a statement. Now, in that statement issued earlier today, it said just as the attack by Hamas on civilians in Israel was abhorrent, there are no words to fully express South Africa's condemnation of Israel's bombing of the Al Ali Arab Baptist Hospital on the 17th of October yesterday, killing well over 500 people and injuring over 1,000. Now that Israel has brought forward what it says is evidence that it was not to blame, are you satisfied that that settles the matter? Is there a need now perhaps for an independent team from the UN to go into Gaza and investigate what happened? Well, I think, you know, if that is to be there, then that is to be there. But the, the um, expression on the part of the South African government is there for South Africa to see, feel, touch and appreciate. Mm. And you've been criticized as, as the South African government and the ANC, which is the party of governance, for the stance in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Just yesterday, the International Relations Department was, shall we say, clearing up what it says was an error, perhaps in the reporting around a conversation held by the minister, Naledi Pando, and the leader of Hamas, where post that conversation, a statement was put out, one in fact purportedly from Hamas, suggesting that there had also been endorsement from Pretoria of the Al-Aqsa operation, which is the name for the Hamas series of attacks as launched in Israel on the 7th of October. But Pretoria says, as you well know, that in that conversation, all that was expressed is solidarity for the Palestinian people and, again, a, a, a plea or encouragement in the direction for peace. Do you know at this stage if Pretoria will again speak to Hamas, given that even they seem to have basically pulled a fast one on you here about what exactly was discussed? Well, I don't know where you see speed and where that speed that you seem to be suggesting where it's going. But I, I suggest that you go through the statement again and internalize it fully, because I think that statement is the, is the final word on the matter as far as Pretoria uh, is concerned. If Pretoria is to engage whoever you know um, whenever in, uh, in the future, that is a matter that will then be there, you know, if it needs to be there. Um, but for now, that statement is a very clear statement. And um, so I, I don't know what you are suggesting when you're speaking of a fast one. I'm not speaking of a fast one. What it says is the statement purportedly from Hamas suggests that there was support from South Africa. The statement shared, of course, 
in the name of Hamas, which suggested in one of the lines there that there was an endorsement of the Al-Aqsa operation, as they are calling the attacks on Israel. That was what is suggested. And now you've got opposition parties who've been saying that, in fact, South Africa is wrong to stand in solidarity with Palestinians. How do you respond? They say you've taken a side. Well, now look, the, um, the response of government is there. The response of government is there. There would have been this uh, report uh, that, you, that you are referencing, and then there's the response of government. And I, I suggest that you, um, that you stay with the response of government. That is the official word on the matter. That is the official word of the, on the matter. And, of course, South Africa is committed to the cause of equality. South Africa remains committed to the cause of human rights. South Africa remains committed to the cause of national rights, you know, to be recognized. Um, and South Africa is, is, is out of our own experience, you know. You cannot achieve peace if you don't, if you don't uh, recognize, you know, these very critical pillars to, um, to tomorrow and to the future and the kind of, of, of tomorrow that you're seeking to, to build. Now, if there are those who might have a difficulty with such a posture, that needs to be explained. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's a correct posture. And it's the kind of posture that would have gotten South Africa, you know, to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've seen this, Ambassador, just lastly, um, Sky News reporting earlier this evening that uh, Israel will now allow Egypt to deliver humanitarian aid into Gaza. That's according, they say, to the Office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They say the decision has come in light of a demand by the U.S. President Joe Biden. What's your reaction, especially as someone who's in the region and has seen perhaps from a closer level, the extent to which the people of Palestine have been suffering as a result of recent events? You know, no food going in, no medical supplies going in. Uh, there are problems in terms of electricity. Um, you, can, you can just imagine um, procedures without proper sanitation, um, you know, equipment. Um, anesthetics, there's a, there's a difficulty. No fodder for, for animals. Complete siege. Now, this is in conflict with international law. Uh, starvation is in conflict with international humanitarian law. You cannot use that as a method. You know, any military manifestation or force, uh, you can't use it as a method against um, a civilian population. Uh, you can't deny them the necessities of life, electricity, water, and, 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 and the likes. And I think we should all, if guided by conscience, we should all know what the right thing is to do. Ambassador to Palestine for South Africa, Sean Bainerfeld. Good to speak to you, sir. Thank you for your time.